So I work, work in technology, and one of the things that you see a lot of companies do is they build their company up until they can sell the company. Now, one of the things that you see a lot of card shops do is they build themselves up until they can then do a pre-order big enough for a few million dollars. In this case, $3.5 million. And then they can rug pull their audience. Yes, so like a tech company, right? You're, you're building your company, you go on Shark Tank, it gets really big, and hopefully you exit. You sell your company for a bunch of money. Well, what if, what if you are a card shop? How do you exit? No one wants to buy you, right? So you build up the card shop, you have lots of really cool inventory, you have lots of really good customers who are consistently pre-ordering from you. Uh, you, well, what you can do is you can just take the pre-order, the last pre-order they made, and just run to a different country. Let's take a look at a few examples. Mark's cards, what they did was they took basically pre-ordered for graded cards. So in grading a card, because they don't know what the grade is, uh, PSA is really weird about this. So if a card grades really well, they will charge you a lot more money because they charge money based on what the card is. So a PSA 10 of a Black Lotus beta is obviously very different from a PSA 9. And if it gets a PSA 10, then you will be charged a lot more because your card is worth a lot more. And again, why does PSA do this? I don't know, they, but they, this is how it goes when you grade. So now in the long term of things, right, in the kind of hindsight, people should not be giving money to this individual because they are scammers. So they were able to get a million, I think 1.1 million, 1.3 million dollars in these grading fees that they didn't have to give directly to PSA. Then they stole the money and gave it to the guy's family. He gave it to his brother's sister's friend. I'm not even joking about this. It is a bankruptcy document. All the things are public. The company's called Mark's Cards. Now, what could be worse than this? Well, let's talk about the clutch cards. Clutch gaming or clutch cards. I don't know what they're called. There's so many of these companies out there. Well, they have a physical store. They spend a lot of money meeting golden auctions, meeting Gary V, going to every convention, you know, going to F1 races. And so they're using the business expense as their personal expense, right? Uh, maybe the IRS should take a look at them because... Opening a pack of cards or showing off a box at an F1 race does not justify your really nice tickets to that F1 or going to a hockey game and taking a picture doesn't justify. They clearly were doing something very, very scam scummy because at the very end, and this is how you know, at the very end, they took a massive pre-order and then they refused to refund and just said that we don't have any money. Well, if, if you knew you didn't have any money, why take the pre-order? No, I, I'm being 100% serious. Like, why would you, if you knew your company was going belly under, why would you take a pre-order for any amount of money, especially trying to maximize? So they made the prices so low that their previous customers thought this was like a great sale or something. Card bros, let's talk about them. So they're out in Asia and they have a lot of games. So this is even more heinous because a lot of their customers seem to be actual game stores. So so when you're like a, a customer pre-ordering some one piece, you'll order a case or two. When you're a game store, you're gonna open, you're gonna probably open, I mean, open what? Um, your player base, a palette of cards. And that's why this one is so unique because of the fact that instead of individual customers, it is entire stores from Japan ordering from them. Again, no idea. So, so they build the company. It, it, let me let me explain this. It's not easy to build this type of company. They got to get the right distribution. They have to get the exclusives. They have to be reliable. They have to do a good job for at least a few years before they can rug pull you. And they do it because uh, they need their Rolexes. They need to take their OnlyFans models. You know, Magic the Gathering, a bunch of OnlyFans models, right? 
and they're not even like in Magic the Gathering. Only fan models and like between you and I, they're just really ugly. Like you know, I don't know what is is with Magic only fans, but like they're like bottom ten percent of only fans. I assume it's really bad, and and their their idea of content is like sitting naked in a uh, in a, a bathtub with like basic mountains. I I can go on and on about the only fans, but let me go back and uh, re rewind this. When one of your partners is actually a convicted criminal, you really, this like, you know, this is like to the dude who's bold, you really have yourself to blame. You know, you really have yourself to blame because what do you think this guy is gonna do when he gets a bunch of money that isn't his, that is pre-orders? He is going to run out of the country. Yes, that's exactly what he did. Like, I don't know what this guy, the bold guy is, you know, he seems like a nice enough guy, but he is as guilty as them because it is his name on the company. Even if they say, oh, you're not part of the company. Well, he was originally part of the company. So back to what I would say and what I would be really, really honest about is at the end of the day, this is just BS, right? This There's just a lot of BS going on here. I don't believe him for one second. Everyone will, everyone's going to point fingers at someone else. No one's going to take responsibility because if you take responsibility, you go into jail. Uh huh. You'd be going to jail, my friend. And no one wants to go to jail, especially probably the guy who already went to jail. <laughs> the convicted criminal is probably like, man, I'm not coming back here. <laughs> Look. This is going to happen more often than you believe. We are, I think the job market, like Joe Biden, like like the numbers were wrong. It was, it was 800 in America, 818,000 less jobs. It's a very big delta. People are going to lose their jobs soon. People, there's no real jobs. I was watching a documentary about ghost jobs where people had like most 95% of jobs and like these websites are fake. They're not actually looking to hire people. And so you can apply to like 100 jobs and 95 of them are not even real jobs. They're called ghost jobs. The economy is going to go to shit, man. It already is. I know, I know, because I see all the collections come in and the desperation of these alpha investment timmies is not lost upon me. I could take, I could buy them, but I don't want to. I have a kid now and I have another channel that I have to, it's like, you know, if I, if this, if that other channel didn't do well, I would focus on this channel, which still do like the two videos. I, I can go on more detail like you. You can't justify like making a video like this and getting like 100 views or 200 views or 300 views. You can't justify it. When you can spend that same time, make a video on the other channel, get a thousand plus views. You spend the same time going on live stream, getting, you know, 100 concurrent, uh, average concurrent, 119 average concurrent, what I did previously. Like, you, you can't justify it, guys. Like, but anyway, don't fall for this scammer. Don't fall for the scammers. Now, again, I do believe he's part of the company, so the whole company is trash.